Hello, welcome to my crash course guide to perimenopause and menopause. If you just bear with me a moment, I will share my screen and we can get going. Okay, so. There. So I've done this because I think there's a real need for us to fully understand what's going on in perimenopause and menopause. And also it's an easy way for you to share this with friends, family, colleagues, you know, your managers at work, whoever it is that needs to know more about this as well, which is basically everyone. Um, because for too many years, I think now we've sort of suffered in silence and enough's enough. So um, without further ado, I'm going to get going. So just to introduce myself briefly, my name is Hannah and I have actually started working in alternative medicine when I was only 16 years old. I did that because I had chronic fatigue syndrome for a couple of years when I was 14 and that came on very suddenly um, in the space of 10 minutes or so. And unfortunately, there was just nothing the doctors or the NHS was able to do to help me and my family at that time. So the options were stay sick for I don't know how long or um, go and try and find some other ways of getting well again which is thankfully what my parents chose to do um, and I got to take them to see various alternative um, therapists and doctors and so on and um, in the space of two years I was thankfully back to my old self again. I then went on to get a degree in western herbal medicine um, that was from Middlesex University and I graduated from there in 1999 after four years of study. Um, since then I've worked all over the UK in various places, South Coast, Manchester and Cheshire, um, and I'm now in Shropshire. But I did at one point also work from a GP surgery doing that. So I, I was very lucky in that respect. Um, and I'm now currently mainly working online, um, offering herbal medicine and health coaching and at some point shortly, I will be offering um, hypnotherapy as well. So um, everything I do is geared towards busy working people. Most of my patients are obviously women specializing in perimenopause and menopause. I do get some gentlemen as well, obviously for other conditions. Um, and um, yeah, so everything's designed for busy people. So it's very manageable and very easy. And we do everything in bite-sized pieces that you can easily incorporate into your daily life. So this picture of me here is actually me in my dispensary. There's about 105 different herbal tinctures in there, um, some of which you can see in the picture. And I would typically blend together around about half a dozen into one bottle of medicine, but I'll explain a bit more about that later. So why do I love working with perimenopause and menopause? Well, I'm 44 at the moment. Um, and I'm obviously experiencing the many joys, not a perimenopause uh, myself. So I have firsthand experience of that. I've also seen friends and family struggling with it over the past few years. Um, and I've obviously being of that age and mixing with women of a similar age, I'm, I was starting to get um, interest in what I do with the herbal medicine. So I got referrals and then more referrals off the back of that. And now about three quarters of uh, the people I see in my clinic are for perimenopause, menopause type issues. I love seeing my patients get their life back. And some of my patients are really suffering quite badly uh, with various menopause um, problems. So herbal medicine is brilliant because it works very quickly and very well. And you can see the results usually very, very soon after starting. So it's really rewarding for me to see my patients get their life back. Um, sometimes after decades. Um, and I also enjoy working with complex cases as well, because it's not always just about perimenopause and menopause. Some of my patients have other health issues um, besides that. So things like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID, lupus, you know, autoimmune conditions, all of those sorts of things as well. So it's not always just as straightforward as, as treating a previously healthy person with perimenopause. So I love the um, complexity of that. So there are lots of different perspectives on menopause, some of which you will have heard and some you might not have done. 
Um, so the way we're being conditioned at the moment in the media is that um, menopause is going to be a complete nightmare for everyone. Uh, you're basically broken and you're not going to get through it without some help. And usually that help will come in the form of HRT. Um, there's a bit of new thinking now on the safety of HRT, whereas previously we've had some safety concerns over HRT with things like uh, breast cancer and uterine cancer. Um, there's a kind of shift in the thinking around that based on some new evidence that's come to light and review of old evidence uh, from the past as well. So, you know, things are changing in the world of menopause at the moment. The way I personally see it is that it's not a health condition, it's not an illness, it's nothing to be afraid of. We're not broken. Um, this is just a natural process. It's similar to adolescence when we go from being, you know, a young girl into a, um, the mother phase, if you like, the childbearing phase of our life. Um, and, you know, that process can take a number of years. And as we reach the end of that childbearing phase, um, then we have to make another transition, which is menopause. Menopause, it's thought, is actually an evolutionary miracle because... I didn't know this, but actually only some species of whale and human beings go through a menopause. We're the only two species in the animal kingdom which have a menopause. I have no idea why whales do, um, but certainly from a human perspective, the thinking is that we needed menopause to happen because we needed elder women to be a key part of the tribe in order for humankind to survive. So if you think about it, actually raising small human beings is really labor intensive. And if the parents were to do that, then that takes quite a lot of resource out of the tribe for hunter gathering and foraging, which is obviously vital for keeping the tribe alive. So menopause kind of had to happen because you needed elders in the tribe to take care of the young children and allow their parents to go out and find food. Hence, along came menopause. But not only that, actually, older women were very much revered for their wisdom. They knew where to find food in times of famine. They knew how to deal with disputes. Um, and they were treasured members of the tribe. Um, sadly, things have kind of changed nowadays and we're not so, um, we don't hold our elderly in such reverence these days. And I really hope that changes at some point very soon. Um, but it's just a complete shift in our thinking. And actually, you know, although I'm only halfway through my normal life expectancy, um, I'm actually noticing that I don't do so many daft things now. And I'm, I'm pleased to have a few years life experience behind me and not to be making the same silly mistakes as I was making in my 20s and even 30s. Anyway, we digress a little. Um, so menopause for some women passes by more or less unnoticed. For other women, it can be really, really difficult. But what, you know, I appreciate that some women really struggle, but what I don't want us to think is that it's going to be so for everyone because that's not how it works. It can usually be helped by herbal medicine. There are other ways of um, dealing with it as well, which I'll go into shortly. Um, but for me, I think it gives us a chance to reprioritize. It gives us a, a chance to get our health in order. And it's really important to remember that we're not broken. This is just a phase that we're going through. It's a transitional process, uh, perfectly normal, although it can be difficult. And, you know, it doesn't mean we're broken. It doesn't mean we're permanently broken and can't be fixed. It's nothing like that. So what actually happens during perimenopause and menopause? So most people, when you say, well, what happens during menopause? They'll say, well, my estrogen levels are going to plummet and... I'm going to get the hot flushes and the headaches and the fatigue and the weight gain and all of that stuff, which is partly true, but there's a little bit more to it than that. So the first thing to remember is that it's not an age thing. Perimenopause starts to happen for most women in their early 40s, menopause, late 40s, early 50s. Um, so the majority of us experience it around about that time. However, it can happen at any age. So you do unfortunately get some uh, women only have a few years um, before they reach menopause. So they're like in their late teens, early twenties. 
the oldest lady I've ever met who's gone through it was uh, 65. Um, so what happens is we're learning to make new forms of estrogen in smaller amounts and in different ways. That's basically all our body processes are sort of reorganizing themselves to enable that to happen. So during perimenopause, which are the years leading up to menopause, our hormone levels are on a constant wobble. The hot flushes and the migraines and those sorts of things, if you're going to get them, tend to happen later on in that process. But in the meantime, you can get other symptoms like a bit of anxiety, a bit of weight gain, um, anger stuff, mental health changes, um, dry nails, dry skin, hair, maybe a little bit of hair loss, all sorts of things. Actually, what happens is the estrogen levels generally climb in perimenopause. So if your estrogen levels are already fairly high, which they are in many women these days, then your estrogen levels climb even more. And then at the end of that, you get this big crash, which is menopause itself. Um, those ladies who have higher estrogen levels to start with can sometimes struggle a bit more than those with the lower ones. Um, so many people, including some doctors, actually say, well, no, 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 that's not right. During perimenopause, your estrogen levels will decline. That's not actually what happens. If you take a look at the work of um, Dr. Geraldine Pryor, who is an endocrinologist with her own clinic in the US that studied this for a number of years, she has proved that actually the estrogen levels climb first and then they take a drop. So you have estrogen and progesterone and they sort of work in tandem together. So the progesterone keeps the estrogen levels in check. Um, but what can happen is progesterone levels can drop um, during perimenopause whilst the estrogen levels climb. So the gap between the two can be really quite big, sometimes bigger than we'd really like it to be. And that can cause some problems. Other hormones fluctuate as well. And they're the ones you wouldn't necessarily think of. So even serotonin, which is not a hormone as such, it's a neurotransmitter, which helps your brain and nervous system to work well. So progesterone, um, sorry, serotonin is the neurotransmitter that makes you feel happy and awake and alert, keeps your mood nice and buoyant. That can drop during perimenopause as well. So there's all this stuff going on. Um, and this is what can lead to the different symptoms. Once we're past menopause, I know that there's a lot of talk about us being estrogen deficient past menopause, which to me does not ring true because your estrogen levels, once you're through menopause are exactly where they need to be because you no longer need to be having a reproductive cycle. Um, so I don't buy into this, your estrogen deficient after menopause and you need something to remedy it. Um, because to me, your body is just doing what it knows how to do and um, your estrogen levels are exactly where they need to be after menopause. This is not to say that you, you know, always get off scot-free um, and there are ways you can deal with that, but your estrogen levels need to be low post-menopause because that's the whole point of menopause. Menopause officially is one year after your last period. Now, rather annoyingly, some women have a period 13 months after their last one. So it's very hard to tell when you're actually through it or not. And you can, you can be a year past your last period, but still be getting symptoms as well. It's not terribly cut and dried. So what does menopause actually look like? So for around about 20% women, they barely notice it's happening. Uh, for the rest of us, symptoms might be mild. So you might get feel a bit more tired than normal. You might get a bit of insomnia. You might get a bit of weight gain or you can get more severe symptoms. For a minority of women, particularly when mental health is concerned, they can get really severe symptoms. And that's something just to be aware of um, and just to keep an eye out for if you've got you know, female friends and relatives and colleagues that you're spending time around, just be aware that if they're behaving in a way that's not normal for them, perhaps that's got something to do with it. And maybe you can sort of point them in the direction of some help. Um, menopause affects both physical and mental health. So we tend to think more of the physical, but actually mental health can be affected as well. So just about any symptom you can think of these days, um, it can be linked to menopause. So it's things like, we know about the hot flushes and the fatigue and the weight gain. Heavy bleeding is quite common. 
joint or muscle pain, uh, even weird things like sore gums, shortness of breath, brain fog, anxiety, depression, even paranoia. Anger is one that's really common, but very rarely talked about where you just suddenly get really angry. Um, mood swings, dryness is also very common. So um, we might know about vaginal dryness, but there's also your skin can go dry, your eyes, your mouth, your hair, um, those sorts of things as well. A hair can sometimes fall out too. What I would say is that although these are very common menopause symptoms, they can also be symptoms of something else. So if you've got them and you're concerned about them, please do go and see your GP and get yourself checked out. How can you help yourself? There is loads and loads you can do to help yourself happily through perimenopause. So again, I think it's a question of prioritizing your own health and happiness. So from often, by the time we get to perimenopause, we have put someone or something else before our own needs, sometimes for decades, whether it's raising family, whether it's caring for older relatives, whether it's our career. Um, and we tend to put ourselves at the bottom of the pile. And menopause calls upon us to stop doing that and to put ourselves first for a little while. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. And, and very often, it can really forcefully push you in that direction, um, sometimes by giving you symptoms that you just can't ignore and you have to do something about. So here are a few things I would suggest you do. Make sure that you're getting plenty of sleep and a bit of relaxation time during the day. I know this is sometimes easier said than done. If you have problems with sleep, try and find ways around that. Make sure that your bedroom is set up in a way that makes it easy for you to sleep. Um, if you need to try chamomile tea or something a bit stronger herbally or maybe even some sleeping tablets if you're really suffering, uh, good night's sleep makes a world of difference to perimenopause symptoms. So if you can nail the sleep, that's, that's quite a big um, win for you. Eating small regular meals, ideally within an eight hour window during the day because part of the weight gain or a large part of the weight gain uh, can be down to insulin resistance. So it's important to eat in a way that balances your blood sugar, minimizes uh, the pressure on the body so that you're not getting such a problem with insulin resistance during that time. You need to eat specific foods in a specific way. Um, and this is one of the things that I cover in my programs in more detail. Um, try and get about 30 minutes of weight bearing exercise a day. I like outdoor exercise because I get the sunlight and I get to see nature and so on, which is also very good for you in many other ways. But the weight bearing exercise is important because it helps to keep your bones nice and strong. Also look to use chemical free skincare and cosmetics if you can, um, because a lot of the chemicals that you find in the common um, skincare and cosmetics that we use most days, have um, properties which upset your hormones and you don't really want them any more upset than they already are. So um, if you can use nice, clean, chemical-free skincare and cosmetics, there's an app called um, Think Dirty and it will tell you everything that's in your current um, products and uh, which ones might be a better choice for you. Um, take supplements if you can. I would suggest a good quality women's multivitamin and mineral, a probiotic, um, or you can eat probiotic foods every day if you prefer to do it that way, which is obviously how nature intended it to be. Um, magnesium is another really good supplement to take during um, perimenopause as well. So it helps you to keep nice and calm and helps the little bit of progesterone that you've got left to work more effectively. If you need extra help and support, please do. Get, get it from wherever you need to get it from, whether you need to speak to your manager at work or some of your friends or whoever. Um, menopause, thankfully, now is being talked about more and more and there's more awareness around it. So um, it's, it's getting easier to talk about how you're doing. So what are your treatment options? If you feel that the self-care isn't quite enough for you, where else can you go for help? What I would suggest is you, if you can, assemble a healthcare team and by that, I mean anyone who's helping you with your health. So maybe your GP, a personal trainer, your massage therapist, your yoga teacher, um, maybe some help with nutrition. Maybe you'd like 
I don't know, regular reflexology, but I'm talking about the whole package, the pampering, the taking care of your mental health, your physical health, you know, your, your posture and your bones and, you know, your joints and all of that stuff, whatever needs help, find someone who can help. Obviously, uh, for many women, HRT and antidepressants are an option. So those are the two fairly standard treatments that you'll be offered by your GP if you think you're going through menopause. And there are guidelines for doctors as to when they can prescribe what. So generally, if you're still having regular periods, you're not going to be offered HRT. You're more likely to be offered antidepressants or um, maybe something like a Miranoc oil. Um, herbal medicine is obviously my thing. And that's very different to using HRT and antidepressants. So I don't have any judgment either, either way. Um, and there's nothing to stop you using HRT, antidepressants and herbal medicine at the same time, provided that you work with someone like me who can assess your needs properly and make sure that the herbs that you're taking can be safely used with your other medication. But herbal medicine is much more personalized so that it's tailor-made to suit you rather than something that's off the shelf. So in terms of what herbal medicine can offer, um, you might have heard of phytosterols or phytoestrogens. Um, there are also, also phytoprogesterones as well, so that they can have a balancing effect. So some women have concerns over using phytoestrogens if they've got a history of something like breast cancer or gynecological cancer of some kind, which is sensitive to estrogen. Back when I was training in herbal medicine 30 years ago, we were certainly taught not to give phytoestrogens to those women. Um, but actually research has shown more recently uh, that phytoestrogens can actually have a protective effect upon um, on that. So what they're doing is actually sitting on the receptors and blocking the real estrogen from getting in so that they can actually protect you from um, succumbing to that kind of cancer again in future. Nonetheless, some women are still concerned about using them, and that's fine if I get a lady who doesn't want phytoestrogens in any way, shape, or form, um, then I just don't use those herbs. It's not a problem. We also have herbs like uh, Vitex agnus castus, which don't have phytosterols in them, but they have an action on the glands that produce your hormones. Um, and they can influence those. So um, yeah, that's another way of approaching it. But also we can influence hormone balance indirectly as well. So you will probably be aware that um, very often gynae symptoms, whether it's premenstrual syndrome or um, menopause or any, any of those sorts of things can often be made worse by stress because your body can't function normally under stress. Um, so we can use herbs that help to calm down that stress response um, and buffer the effects that it will have upon your, um, your hormone levels. We also look at liver clearance because it's not just the hormones that you're making. We need to think about it's the way that you're clearing out the old hormones that have already been used. Um, and sometimes that can be compromised a little bit. So we can look at um, supporting the liver in processing those old hormones and, and getting rid of them. And we can also target specific symptoms as well. So I have specific herbs for palpitations and hot flushes, um, brain fog, and all of these different symptoms that we might encounter. So your medicine is built from the bottom up um, precisely to suit your needs at the time. And as your needs change, then the prescription changes as well. The idea with herbal medicine is not that you need to stay on it indefinitely. Um, obviously perimenopause can be a fairly long journey for some women so you can take the herbs for as long as you need to take them but it's not like some other forms of mainstream medication where you're expected to stay on it for life um, they should just help your body get itself right and then over a period of time we can usually wean you off um, your medicine or some women prefer to stay on a very low maintenance dose of maybe a teaspoonful a day something like that so it's entirely up to you how you want to work in terms of what I offer specifically, I, being a busy working mum myself, I thought, well, do you know, if I was working with someone and they were telling me to do an hour a day homework, I just, I couldn't work with them because there's no way I can find an hour a day um, with everything else I've got going on. So I've designed all my programs for busy women who don't have a lot of spare time, but we still make massive progress because everything is done 
in a very dynamic way and a very bite-sized way. So we set little goals and then we, all the goals are doable in less than 15 minutes a day. And all the coaching sessions that I offer are only 15 to 20 minutes once a week. So it's very quick, very punchy, and it gets big results very, very quickly. Um, I can offer the herbal medicine and the health coaching separately or combined together. So the combined program is my 90 day rescue program. So the way it works is the herbal medicine basically makes the tweaks and nudges on the physical level, whilst with the health coaching, we're getting the big stuff in place. So we're getting the diet right, the nutrition right, the hydration, the exercise, the sleep, the rest, we're getting a better understanding of what's going on with our bodies and what we need to do to look after ourselves. And that sets you into good habits, not just for the duration of your program, but for the rest of your life as well. So, you know, I said we have a narrow window to get our health right in perimenopause. That's our main aim for the program. Most women get around about an 80% improvement by the time they finish. Um, I can advise you on the best program for you, depending on how severe your symptoms are. So, you know, if things have got really, really bad and they're having a massive impact on the rest of your life, then usually you will need the combined program. If things haven't got quite that bad yet, then um, often the eight week program is, is perfectly good enough. And that's just herbal medicine on its own. Also, it's a chance to give you some me time, which most of us don't get. So it's a time, you know, if you have 15 minutes or 20 minutes with me once a week, that's your time for you. You know, we can do your coaching and your goals and all of that stuff. But if you just want to offload or we have a bit of a laugh or whatever it is you need, you can have that time for yourself. Plus lots of moral support and advocacy as well. So let's just say, for example, uh, something crops up in your first appointment, which makes me think mm, that needs looking into uh, a little bit more. Then with your permission, um, I can write to your GP and just say, look, we've had this appointment. This is what we've noticed. Is there any chance we could get a referral for some extra tests or uh, see a specialist or, you know, bloods or whatever it is we need to do? So it's like you've got someone else fighting your corner as well. Um, and like I said, you get guidance on how to stay well for the rest of your life. So it's not just about, you know, the short period of time that we're working together. It's, it's getting you into good habits then for the rest of your life. So here's what some of my patients say. I have now got dozens of testimonials on my website there's one lady I'll tell you about in a minute whose testimonial I'm hoping is coming shortly so there was a lady called Andrea Rainsford um, who basically said that I saved her life and I didn't actually appreciate when I first saw her how bad things had got she didn't tell me until afterwards that she was actually close to um, closing down her business which it had taken her many years to um, get going so she said her menopause symptoms were gone in four weeks. She did have some sensitivities and it was um, a bit of a trial and error process getting her medicine and the dosage right. Um, but we got there and she was a completely different lady within the space of just four weeks. Then there was another lady called Martha who was having hot flushes about three or four times every hour, 24 hours a day. She hadn't had a good night's sleep in years. Um, and it was starting to impact on her job and her performance at work, and that was worrying her as well. Um, but again, within four weeks, she was down from three to four flushes an hour to three flushes a day, three flushes in 24 hours. And then obviously that had a knock-on effect because she started to feel stronger and more confident at work. And uh, she was able to go back to the gym and start her classes again. Um, and that helped with her weight. And so it went on. So it worked really well. And then there was another lady, you know, I said at the beginning that I enjoy working with complex cases and women who got stuff other than menopause going on at the same time. Um, so this lady had had fibromyalgia for 20 years and to the point where she could only work a couple of hours a day and her family were her carers. So they needed to cook for her and, you know, take care of her. Um, and very quickly after she started on her herbal medicine, she just turned around completely. I'm stunned every time I see her as to how much she's improved. So her fatigue got better um, and she was able to work longer hours and she was able to go for day trips. She began driving again. Um, and what really hit home for me was once she'd been better a good few weeks, unfortunately, her husband had a major heart attack 
and she had to do CPR while she waited for the ambulance to come. And she, the first thing she said to me when I called to see how she was, was that she wouldn't have had the stamina to keep going for that long had she not had her herbal treatment. So, you know, who knows what we can do when we're under that sort of pressure and the adrenaline kicks in, but I just thought it was quite incredible that she'd been able to do that for that long. Um, and I, I'm not sure that she could have done it um, otherwise. So yeah, it's it makes quite a significant difference. So it just remains for me really to thank you very much for watching. Um, if you would like to uh, tell me what's going on for you and see what your options are, you're very welcome to book a free call with me. My contact details are here on this slide, but you can book online as well on my website. Um, and if you've enjoyed watching this and you found it useful, I'd be really grateful if you could share it with friends, family and colleagues, because we really do need to spread the word about menopause awareness and the more women who are aware of what can happen and what to look out for and what they can do, the better, I think. So we, you know, we owe it to womankind to try and push awareness of menopause and get each other talking about it. So thank you ever so much for coming. Um, and maybe I'll see you again soon. Thank you.